What is up, folks? And YK31 here, bringing you some Madden 16. I'm playing. Uh, huh, 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 yawning. Huh. <laughs> I am playing the Thanksgiving Day matchup: Dallas Cowboys against the Carolina Panthers. Here, or one of the Thanksgiving matchups, I should say. On all Madden. Which, believe it or not, I actually enjoy playing on. It's playing on default all Madden. But, um, here we go. And I haven't done a Around the NFL segment in a couple of weeks. And this one I'm going to devote mainly towards uh, talking about uh, the Carolina Panthers. And, well, mainly I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, Cam Newton. A little bit of a Cam Newton appreciation day as the Carolina Panthers are one of the two remaining undefeated teams in the NFL at 10-0 and and had yet another impressive game as they thrashed the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day. I mean, my goodness. At one point, Luke Keekley had uh, counted for more touchdowns than Dallas Cowboys themselves. As you see, Keekly being Mr. Johnny on the spot there, or I'm using him and he's being Mr. Johnny on the spot as Thomas Davis um, forced the fumble and I recovered it. And really, ironically enough, past week, Cam and the offense didn't really have to do a whole heck of a lot as uh, the Cowboys basically gave them, the ga gave them the game. But in looking at the Panthers' season and looking at uh, Cam Newton as a player, personally, as of right now, we enter in to the home stretch of the regular season. The month of December is always where things get crazy. And division titles and playoff spots are won and lost. I think as of this weekend, as of right now, Cam Newton is the MP of the league. And if form holds, I don't think either team's going to end the regular season undefeated between the Panthers and the Patriots. Obviously, Tom Brady, MVP candidate every single season. Other MVP candidates that you can probably throw out there would be, um, I guess, Adrian Peterson. You can throw him in the mix if you want. Certainly, Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer is... We've forgotten how good Carson Palmer is. And we always forget how good the Arizona Cardinals are. But Carson Palmer is having a incredible season. The Red Rifles kind of cooled off a little bit, but, you know, those would be like the top four or five MVP candidates in the league right now. And I think Cam Newton should be the front runner. Now, I say that not even being someone who's always been much of a Cam Newton fan. And it's really my own fault for not appreciating him sooner. One, I'm not really a big fan of running quarterbacks in the NFL level or at the NFL level. And I make a distinction between running quarterbacks and quarterbacks that can run. For example, Michael Vick's a running quarterback. Colin Kaepernick, running quarterback. Russell Wilson, he's a quarterback that can run. It's Aaron Rodgers, as is Andrew Luck. Teddy Bridgewater. Ben Roethlisberger, quarterbacks that can run versus a running quarterback. A running quarterback to me is someone who needs their legs to survive. And if they blew out their ACL, the careers would end. Like Dante Culpepper, for example. As opposed to a quarterback that uses his legs as an extension of his pocket passing game. Yet I also feel like that sometimes black quarterbacks who have any athletic ability at all get typecast as a quote-unquote mobile QB, when really they're, they're not. Donovan McNabb was like that. McNabb played his whole life in Andy Reid's system or in the West Coast offense, and McNabb actually made a conscious effort not to run, which actually served to his detriment at times. And McNabb, if I'm not mistaken, still holds the record for most consecutive completions um, in a single game. But I think Cam Newton kind of, for those reasons and some other reasons as well, kind of has always suffered from a perception problem. And I kind of bought into that as well. When he was in college, he always had this kind of shady vibe to him, getting kicked out of Florida. I mean, when Urban Meyer runs you out of there, you got to be a pretty seedy guy. And then even at his time at Auburn, he had like a cloud of shadiness around him as well. The media would always bring up from time to time when they talk about his resurfacing from junior college ranks and whatnot, and then going into the draft, people kind of felt like it came across as a phony, 
personality-wise. They doubted that. And then in the league, he was the guy who put up big numbers but found a way to lose games, or his team found a way to lose games. He put up a lot of empty yardage, so to speak. And we all ignored, or people ignored, the fact that, you know, those early years, the only halfway decent guy to going to is Stevie Smith. <laughs> and um, this year, Calvin Benjamin goes down the ACL injury. You've got guys like Teddy Ginn, Jericho Cotri is still kicking around. So you got Wilson and a couple of good backs. Uh, halfway to the offensive line, Cam, and that's damn near it. And when you get the body of work he's put together for his career so far, and this season, the man just produces points. And what impresses me about him the most is that he leads, and his team believes in him. I mean, his teammates 100% buys in, and he just flats out makes it happen for his team every single week. And again, his teammates 100% buy in. They 100% believe in that guy. And that speaks volumes. I think he's one of the most unique players in the league. He's the most unique QB I've ever seen. Is he ever going to be a 65% passer? Probably not. He doesn't have the weapons to do that. He doesn't play an offense that allow him to do that. His QB rating and QBR aren't going to leap that at you. His QBR is barely higher than guys like Alex Smith. But what he has to spin in the pocket, he can get it done. He's not a one read and dash out of the pocket kind of guy. And he's not like any other really mobile athletic QB we've ever seen as far as the way he's built. Most athletic QBs that we've seen, they're built like Vic, they're like Russell Wilson, Steve Young. You know, they're kind of smallish and they're starters, they're scat guys. Cam Newton is every bit as athletic as a guy like Russell Wilson, but he's built like a freaking truck. He can run the ball between the tackles like a back and still has enough in his body to play from the pocket and deliver the passes that need to be made in order to win games. Just a really special set of skills, and I've really come to appreciate them. And he produces just as much points as those other guys who get them in the pocket. He just does it in a different way. And I think that that way, based on the team's success, is now being appreciated more. And it's good to see. So I'm all in. I'm all in on Cam Newton. I am a full believer, and I am completely on the bandwagon. So that is my Cam Newton for MVP campaign. <laughs> That's my campaign speech for Cam. And that's all I got to say. I'm going to go back to watching some football. I'll let you guys watch how this game plays out here. I'm a good little hustle here, I guess, with the Cowboys here. I'm down 24-21, actually, and need to tighten up and um, get it done. We'll see if I can. Hope you guys enjoy. Talk to you all later. Peace. Quarter begins with this snap. Out again. Being a go to target, Bill, I think you would say every quarterback needs one in any way he can. Well, a couple things, Jim. You can't blame the quarterback because of Trell, and he has been outstanding here today. The offense, the offensive line, the play calling, all good. He's averaged about two yards a first down and ten. Looking across the middle, climbs the ladder, and he has it. Jim, they got momentum on their side right now. They are making everything work. That was a nice play. They pick up another first down, and they got a good drive going here. his third catch of the day. The Cowboys are in front thanks to their quarterback. Romo's done everything he can to keep his team on top. He has been so efficient. B third down. We're late in the fourth and the offense is just trying to sit on the lead. Phase. 
Romo is unable to find his target that time. Well, the game is close. You're losing. It's third down. You need to get it. The Panthers snap it at the 31. Stewart's the receiver on the screen. Well, when you see a play like this by the offensive player, that is a great reflection on the coach. You can tell they've gone over these situations. When you're fighting the clock and you can get out of bounds, get it done. Thurs come to the line of scrimmage with two timeouts to play with. The Panthers have it at the 29. And now Newton's going to take off. That's a pickup of 14. The Panthers are going to use one of the two timeouts they have remaining. Crucial third down play coming up. The Cowboys defense brings in an extra member of the secondary. They'll go nickel. Third and ten. He'll throw it over the middle. And that's a touchdown late in this one. They had to take it from the red zone to the end zone with only one snap to go, and they pull it off. Congratulations to the offense, but I know the defense is going to be sick when this is here. Prevent defense here, trying to avoid the deep pass. Second down and 10. Looking at every option. And it's going to fall incomplete. Their comeback effort comes up short. Well, we saw it just moments ago. A touchdown at the end to win the game. When you score late in the game and get a touchdown like that, boy, that just makes it double exciting. A lot of joy over there. Enjoy the big victory.